In this project, we'll use some of the techniques we've already learned, and I'll toss a couple of new things in here as well, and we'll do this little basic circular logo. Okay, we'll start off with a brand new file. Let me just close this out of the way. There we go. Here's the original ingredient that we did a while ago. Let me just bring this one up as an example. There it is. Make a new file. Click on the new file button right there. I'll leave all these at their default settings. And you leave it at horizontal. Choose OK. There's our basic new file. Now I want to put a circle in the middle of this. So let's grab the ellipse tool over here, left hand side. And notice if I move around, I can find the center. It actually shows up. If you go up here to view and come down to snap to, as we have page selected right down here and also we have guidelines and rulers selected. And that will then show us where some of these things are. There's our midpoint, there's our center point, things like that. So let's come on to the center point and then if you pull and drag you get the ellipse in here. If you hold the shift key down it pops that to the center of the page. If you hold the control key down as well, it makes that a perfect circle. So there's a perfect circle right there drawn from the center of the page. Pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead now and match our previous gradient. That's this thing right here. So I'll click on that, go up here to Properties, bring up our Properties, and we have an outline, which is in that color right here. And looking at this as CMYK, if you want to match a color exactly, just make a note of the CMYK values over here. This is 82 and then 55, then 0, and 0. Go over here to our untitled object. There it is. We're still inside of our properties. Click on the outline, and then just match this up here. 82, and 55, and 0. There we go. There's that same color. So we've matched our color. Let's go back here again. And notice over here we have the size or thickness right down here. The outline is 25 pixels. 25 pixels and it's a solid line. So again, back to our untitled, we still have that selected. So you can just type in the 25 right here and then set this at pixels. And let's retype that. There it is. And that then matches that size. So it's pretty easy to make a match on a new object just by copying settings from a previous object. Now back over here again, we have our gradient in here and you'll find that up here under the fill. So it's properties and fill. And there's a gradient, just a fountain fill, standard fountain fill right here. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see it's the second type over. This is a radial or elliptical fountain fill. And we have a dark color here and a light color over there. If we click on the dark color. That brings up the color picker. Click on this. And you can then make a note of the color right over in here. Just write down those numbers. 189, 24, and 33. Let's look at the light side over here. Just click on that. Again, the color here changes. Click on the color and you can then see your numbers over here and that's 65. These are all in the CMYK range. Okay, we can now match the colors in here. So let's go back to our new document. There it is. And we're on the fill right here. We'll come down here to this one. This is your fountain fill. You want this for the second one over. This is the radial right there, radial fountain fill. And then the left side, click on that, click on the color and we can put our numbers in. And that's 100, and then 89, and then 24, and our final one down here is 33. And that sets that color in, that now matches. Let's go over here to the right hand side, click on that little box there, brings up the color, click on the color over here, and then this one was just 65 at the top. Hit the enter key, and there we go. We've now moved that over. Now we need to move the center position on this up over to here. And the easy way to do that is to go over here and where it says interactive fill, just click on that. You can then grab that position here and actually move that over. There we go, and that looks pretty good right there. Okay, back to the pick tool up there. There's our basic circle. Now we can bring in down here that cutout pretty easily. I'm just gonna first zoom in just a bit. Let's just zoom this to fit the page height. There it is. And then we'll go back to the pick tool. Now if we come down here to the ellipse tool, it's coming to here someplace about right here, kind of like the bottom third and bottom third end, right about here. And then we can draw a circle about that big. And then I'll just use the pick tool here to move it down to about that spot. This is just sitting on top of that shape. Now to make that cutout, just pull a marquee around both of those objects 
And then up here, we have the different ways of working with multiple objects. What you want to have is this one right here. This is the back minus the front, and that gives you that cutout. There you go. Next, we have our texture on the outside, and that's pretty easy to do. Let's go back here to the ellipse tool, come back and find the center. There it is. You can begin drawing a circle, then hold the shift key down that puts it to the middle of the page. Hold the control key down that makes it a perfect circle and then pull it out just a little ways past your circle like that and then let go of everything. There's your basic circle. Now at this point we can actually put text on this circle. Just switch over here to the type tool. There it is, there's our text. And just looking at our size up here, we have Arial. I'm gonna set this for a 24 point. We'll adjust that size later. Let me just first put our spot on. Now if I roll this over here, see how we get that kind of a double arrow there and then kind of a weird squiggly line. That squiggly line is where you want it to be. Click on that. And that gives us a center point right there. Okay, it's at 24, that's fine. And we can now go ahead and type that in. And we'll type in Super Circle Gaming. Now if you click on this, one, two, three, it selects the whole line, and we can change the size of the text over here. Notice that the properties has now changed over to text. We're now looking at our text properties. And right here, there is the character and here is your type size with a nice little up and down arrows. Click on the up arrow and you can make the text larger and don't take it clear around until it gets halfway around on both sides. Right about there, just about straight across on both sides. Okay. Click at the end here right for the G and I'll hit the space bar. Just move it down one space. Let's now put in a character in here but we'll also change the typeface. You can actually do this in the middle of a line. We're here to character, and I'll scroll way down, right down towards the bottom down here. We have some special typefaces, and the one I'm looking for, just scroll down here, is Webdings, and there it is right there. Now, I can't see any text in here, so I switch over here to the text docker right there. We can then pick up the different glyphs for this thing. And we'll do that up here under text right here and come down to glyphs. We're seeing our glyphs and there they are. They're showing right down there below. There's the glyphs. The glyphs are the contents of that particular font. Now let's switch back here to arrows. So let me just switch that back again. Again, scroll down, bring it back to webdings. There it is. And here are all kinds of little clip art style images. And these are all text based. That's actually works just like text. And the one I chose is right there. If you double click on that, it then copies that onto your page. There it is. Now I can just come in here and just select that. So I just click just to the one side and drag over that. And I'll do a control C for a copy. I'll come down here and then a control V and a bunch of those. Just control V each time. And that just pastes in a bunch of copies. Now the whole thing's turned on its side. We don't want that. So let's go back up here to the pick tool. And this is sometimes a little bit tricky, but if you click a few times, that took three clicks that time, you get these little kind of curved arrow things. You can now grab this and pull this around and it will spin the whole thing. Unfortunately, you can't see the spin while you're doing it. So you have to do it just a little bit at a time until you get it lined up properly. And there we go. Here's our super circle gaming. There's one problem left and that's this little thin line in here that we used to align our text. We need to get rid of that. So click on that with the pick tool. That just selects the whole thing. Click back up on properties up here and choose the first one right there. This is the outline. I want to choose that. Let's change that to none. There it is, the outline at none. Click outside and that line now goes away. So there we go.